Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Today is day 120, and for the second day, we're going to be focusing on volume. And our work today is definitely going to focus on the volume of the three new eighth grade shapes, which are cylinders, cones, and spheres. By now, we appreciate that you've already taken the time to read through and understand today's objectives and key terms, which were found here. And you already should have spent 10, 15 minutes working with your partner to try to go through the two exploratory problem sets on your own. In the interest of time, we're going to quickly go through part three here, which is analyzing your work by showing you how to complete these two exploratory problems, seeing how you did. And then you and your partner are going to go ahead and work on the blue box problems, the practice problems that follow to apply your new math skills. So as we take a look at problem A, I'm going to read through that quickly. It says to double click to edit the drawing above, which is how we edit any of these drag and draw problems. And then we're going to place each key term or each formula into the correct box for the different shapes that we see here. So if I double click on this drawing to start editing, the first thing we're going to need to do is identify the name of each of these shapes. If you didn't know that, hopefully you discussed it with a partner, looked these terms up on Google. Any of that would have helped you understand that the green one is called a cylinder. It's two circles connected with straight lines going up to each other. Examples of a cylinder could be things like a soda can. A sphere is one of these circles in three dimensions. It's a perfect ball. Things like a soccer ball, a basketball would be considered a sphere. And then a cone, you might have seen traffic cones out around in the city, that is a circle and all edges go straight up to a point that's right in the middle above the circle and creates a right angle if you go from the vertex, the point of the cone, all the way down to the center of the cone. So now that we know that each of these figures are called, we should figure out what are the different formulas that go with each of these figures. There's really one formula for each, but there's different ways to write equivalent expressions or different ways to represent that formula that may be easier to understand. If you went to your MCAS reference sheet, we're going to take a second to show you how to find that. If you went to your MCAS reference sheet, which is here in the objectives or linked in a bunch of the problems you're going to do on your own for exploratory and practice problems today, that MCAS reference sheet, which we'll show you for a second, can quickly help you see which volume formulas or area formulas match up with each shape. So now we don't have to memorize these formulas, we just have to know how we take these formulas and apply them when we're working with each of these different shapes. So the three shapes we're focused on today, the sphere, the cone, and the cylinder, or what MCAS likes to call the right circular cylinder to mean a cylinder that has 90 degree angles, are these three formulas here. So that could help you understand what I'm going to show you pretty quickly here back in the video lesson. The formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared, r squared, times the height. And we could also write that pi is equivalent to 3.14, or that's our rational number estimate for pi. So 3.14 could also be used for pi. And now we see these are just two equivalent equations represented a little differently. The sphere equation was 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed. So I see the other one with pi radius cubed. Instead of writing 4 over 3, they showed 1.33, which is again an estimate for 4 thirds. 4 thirds would be a non-terminating decimal. It would just keep going as 1.333 forever, but you could write 1.33 as an estimate. The cone, that's the last formula here. It's one-third pi r squared h. And as we talked about in Kahoot yesterday, multiplying by the fraction one-third times him by one and then dividing by three is really equivalent to just dividing by three. So another way to represent this is to show pi is 3.14. And instead of times him by one-third, that's equivalent to dividing everything by three. So that's part A, hopefully what these shapes are called and the formulas that we could use to figure out volume or work with volume problems when we're working with these shapes are becoming familiar now. Part B, the second part of your exploratory problems today, 
tells us that shown above is a three-dimensional shape, a figure with width, depth, and height. And we're going to have to, again, open up our MCAS reference sheet as we're working with volume for any of these three-dimensional shapes. We're asked what kind of shape is shown and what formula could be used to find the volume for this shape. So for there, at this point, you should be pausing the video, cross-referencing back to part A, where we had worked with a cylinder already, and we see the formula is pi r squared times h. So the shape is a cylinder. The formula, if you want to know how to enter these equations, for the formula, you're going to go ahead up here. You're going to click Insert, and then you're going to click Equation. And after you click Insert Equation, you'll be able to type in an equation. V equals pi, which is really just 3.14 times r squared times h. And then ultimately, you're going to ask to find the volume for this figure. So to find the volume, again, we know V equals pi times radius squared times height. So the two key things you know need to know to find volume are the radius and the height. So hopefully you saw here the radius. We look at the circular base. The distance halfway across is the radius. The radius is 3 inches. The height, the distance connecting the two circular bases, is 10 inches. So we're going to be taking this equation here. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste down here. I would recommend that you're doing this on a whiteboard instead. But you would plug in 3 for the radius. And you would plug in 10 for the height. Again, these are inches. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 3 inches and 10 inches. So when I multiply this out, 10 times 3 times 3 is going to give me 90. And that's going to be cubic inches because inches squared times another set of inches is going to give us cubic inches. Again, we're doing volume. And then we're going to still have to do 90 times 3.14. And pi times radius squared, which was 9, and 9 times 10 gives us 90. If we put all of this into our calculator, 3 squared times 10, the height, times pi, which is 3.14. Our calculator should be showing 282.6 for an answer for volume. V equals 282.6, and that's cubic inches here. And we were asked ultimately to round to the nearest unit or estimate to the nearest unit. So hopefully you recognize the nearest unit for 282.6 cubic inches would be 283 cubic inches. Nearest unit is the nearest whole number, and anything five or higher tells us we need to round up to 283 because it's a little closer to 283 than it is to 282. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Good luck on the rest of the blue practice problems below. If you have any questions, put your name on Classroom Q or grab me, Ms. Stewart, Mr. Chu, directly when you have the opportunity.